Healing crystals, skincare routines, knitting a sweater, fitting in jeans. With Katie and Sarah, no need to worry, you're on a lady journey. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> We just went on a tirade. Here we are. (laughs) We like to to um, to just talk shit, and then we we cut it off, and we go right away. uh, Go right into soups. (laughs) Like a morning radio, like morning, everybody. Morning, hi, hi. Hi. Welcome to. And you know who else was a dick? (laughs) Hi. Hi. Good morning, Lady Journey. Welcome to Lady Journey. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, welcome, welcome everybody to Lady Journey. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for liking, subscribing, subscribing, leaving comments. Please do. And um, we have a, uh, an amazing guest today, Liz Mealy. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for coming Welcome. on, Liz. Yeah. I appreciate um, it. Liz, you're on such a lady journey. I, I'm ready. Yeah. I, uh, I honestly, I'm you caffeinated. I, I feel like I'm oh. ready for all of this. Me too. I am over caffeinated. That's <laughs> my, I'm not, iced coffee, I can't really handle it. But when it gets warm, I'm like, I think I'm ready to spiral. Maybe. Oh, <laughs> it's exciting to oh, hit iced exciting. coffee season. Oh my That's God. my favorite. You're cleaning your home suddenly. Yeah. It's already <laughs> clean. You're like, I feel like I should scrub the counters. <laughs> mm, it's the best. It's the best. So, Liz, um, I'm so excited because we ha- we do, like, a lot of travel stuff on the pod, and you've got a big trip coming up. You're going yeah, you to travel a lot. Yeah, you're, you're always do. going places. You're, I mean, you're, you're an international comedian and <laughs> sensation. Yeah. <laughs> Where are um, you the biggest? Yes. Um, probably England. I think, okay. Yeah. I think England and I think think australia is starting to catch up but i have only been to australia once as yeah. opposed to like i i go to england every year now oh. how um why do you think england you're because you're english speaking that ha- it does help okay um okay. for both <laughs> countries uh, 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 and i think that honestly uh, what i've learned from traveling is almost everywhere it takes in so much american television and movies yeah so and then of course how many all most movies are set in la or new york and then just like stand up in general, like just the universal nature of what everybody is taking in around the world. Like everybody knows Marvel movies. Like you don't really have to change your act in general because there's, if I say Beyonce or I say, you know, Spider Man, pretty much everybody in the world knows those references. Yeah. But I think more importantly, this kind of New York disposition, like who I am as a person, reads as a character. So I'm like on stage being like, I'll fucking kill your mother. And they're just like, ah, oh, she's fun. <laughs> like, we love and, her. So I think in general, like, accent and just disposition is an off putting because they take it in with the characters that they've grown up with and watch every uh, okay you every fit day. into their paradigm of yeah. like long island like disgruntled woman yeah, i don't like the long island part but um <laughs> but every well, jersey i'll every, say jersey yeah I'll we'll go jersey, jersey yeah. trash is what i'll accept um <laughs> but i think that's part of it but i would think i also believe especially for england itself is that i think and I think a lot of places, they feel how you feel, but culturally, they would never respond that way. They would never say that. Yes. So if I tell a joke about telling somebody to go fuck themselves in the middle of the street, they're like, yes, I agree. But they would never do that. They can't do they it. Would, they would be like, oh, so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're like, so repressed. So, I love that. so there is something about both the act of doing stand-up and publicly putting out my laundry, but then also just my aggressive, angry disposition and just how I say things, I've just noticed, and I've kind of changed from like monotone to just becoming my true angry self. Mm. But I think in general, what I've noticed in the 10 years of touring England is just, I think they relate to me in a way, like I used to think I was born in the wrong place because like they relate to me in a way that like I murder so well in London. And there'll be times that like California, like somebody will be like, oh, you know, is it weird performing in like Sweden? And I'm just like, I don't know. They speak better English than us and they think I'm funny. I bomb in LA all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like I I just, there's something about like, and I I have fans now in California, so I do better. But I spent the first 10 years of my career being like, ah, I must be so East Coast. I must be so like New Jersey, New York, just like ah, that. Like when I would tell a joke, they'd be like, "Just fucking go for a walk. Why are you chill so- out, bro?" Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It really is. <laughs> so it's funny to just go to different countries and be like, "Oh, my disposition." Even if they don't put it out there, their internal feelings mirror this country better than just the the fact that the U.S. is so big that mm. like who I am like I do all right in like Texas but like I've bombed in West Virginia so many times that I'm like oh, is that my a- god uh, you know the I mean? coal mining towns they don't get me <laughs> you know what they I mean they don't like, get me <laughs> but it is it's so fascinating to be like these places that I've never been to relate to me more than places that I've been to 
a yes, million times on the yeah, road. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. I won't go to Miami anymore. Yeah, why? Well, I don't do stand up. Yeah. I just eat a big dick there, yeah. and there's a disconnect. Yeah, yeah. We are. I'm sure I could probably find rooms smaller. Yeah. But every time I've done like a show and there it's like a guy that's promoted it's big and it's like the night out you're like this it's but just it's a party, awful. It's a party town and yeah, like the you relatability, I'm dry. Yeah. The relatability yeah. is not there, you know. Exactly. It's like Miami you have to be like any like you know how like when you go to the beach it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't even know if it has to like I almost think disposition wise it yeah. makes sense mm. that you wouldn't do well in mm. Miami. Well, I'm not like, as animated. Whole, you're not animated. You're I you know, I love you dearly but Thank you're not you. a party. <laughs> no, I'm not a party. I am not a party. Yeah, you're Tea party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a day tea party. party. Go to yes. London. Yeah. have tea parties there. That's no, so have you done a tea in London? What's Did you do I'm, any like high teas there? I don't know if I've done a high tea, but like I genuinely love tea and like. Love it, tea. I like, the, I, I have a niece and like I remember she's like, do you want to have a tea party? And I was like, I've been waiting for years oh, for yeah. somebody to invite me my to a tea God. party. I like anything on tears. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Give me sandwiches. sandwiches finger sandwiches. Cut perfectly. Oh. But I, I do. I like the ceremony of it. And like when I was in Japan, same, like I went to a couple like tea like tea houses and like I I love I don't know I I love somebody telling me about leaves I don't understand like, yeah I love yeah. I love all of it just the bitterness <laughs> now what do you have a favorite type of tea or do you just love all teas um I mean clearly like so I what I've really learned is that I like a like a milk tea like even like Ooh, so you think of like a latte a milk tea but like that's where I think I've kind of grown into like like I love bubble tea. I love anything that's like a little Ooh. bit of tea and mostly I love milk. Same. Yeah, I love I a tea like I can milk. choke on. I, think I, like I milk. love that. Yeah, no, I I like a, a hazard, but I. I, I do. I love, but I love like a black milk tea or like almond milk tea with that sweet, yes. Ooh, yummy. Yeah, I think I like melted ice cream. That yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like in that no is, forms. Yes. But I, I don't know. I I think what I've been very fortunate about is that I've never felt like I fit in culturally anywhere like where I grew up in this community this comedy community just anything and then I started touring and it's just like oh you find like pockets of people that get you and I think I think people look at a fan base poorly in the sense that you know some people are like I'm just I'm just trying to be famous or I'm just trying to like work or whatever and I've started to be like I'm just individually finding my people around the world that just I can be myself and I don't have to change anything and I think some people are able to do it on a broad level but I don't I don't think any of us in this room hit a broad level as quickly as you can hit individuals and have them love you forever. Yeah. Wow. You know well, what I, mean? yeah. I knew that I remember watching the documentary on Bill Hicks, his success. Yeah. He I've would destroy in England, sell out and then he'd come to America and it's just barely selling out club shows and it would kind of devastate him to be like, I don't understand why there's such a split in this. Mm-hmm. And then when he, d- I feel like then when he died, it's like he has become, it a almost martyr. feels like he was like ahead of his time here in the States. Absolutely. I mean, I discovered him when I was a teenager. I read all the like, cause all these like biographies came out when I was um, in high school. Uh, I think like a documentary and like I, I listened to all his albums and I, I wonder if like unconsciously that, cause I remember reading that and it, I really did feel so unaccepted here in a way that like. I don't want to say didn't make sense because I think we all go through that and I think this business is so hard and it leaves so many people on the outskirts but I just in some ways it was fortunate that I I was it was so hard here that I kept being like well I'll just get better and then it was hard and I was like I'll just get better and then eventually I was like oh I think I'm pretty good like I yeah. accidentally yeah. worked too hard but like when I went overseas they were kind of like they they just kind of engulfed me in a way that I was just like Oh, I didn't. I didn't know I could be accepted. <laughs> like, that's yeah, wonderful. yeah. And that's it, wonderful. And I kind of a couple of things. Like, whenever like a new comic, like you know, we travel all over the country. You know, have like an opener from Chicago or an opener from Denver, and they'll be like, "What is it like in New York?" And you're like, "It's hard." But I do think if you, I think it's worth being the new fish somewhere. As as hard as it is to be the new Jack anywhere, I think there's so much value to it. And the because I started in New York, the only time I experienced it was going overseas and all of a sudden I was like oh 10 years into my career where I felt invisible and not good enough all of a sudden just because I was a new jack all of a sudden people are like oh this girl's pretty good and yeah. you're like what nobody's ever said that yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah yes that's exciting that and is exciting so I do actually really encourage a lot of like new comics whether they pick LA or New York for whatever reason 
like it's going to be fucking hard but there actually is a benefit to being the new kid on the block and if you utilize it if you're prepared for it yeah it could be the best thing that happens to you but it's still going to be starting over even if it's a little bit start over it could be a massive start over so like with with the uk and really all of europe i because i wasn't going to live there it wasn't starting over but because i was willing to do the work um, that I had done back in the US because I was like, maybe this is where I'm gonna be and maybe this might be a new beginning. I started over in a little bit, but I, be 10 years in, I went through the phases a lot quicker than somebody that would have started yeah. in Europe. Well, I remember hearing that with like Maria Bamford when she was in Minneapolis, I think it was. They were like, they just didn't get it. And then she moved to LA and it was just like embraced immediately. But I say, I, I did this like, this talk for like this kind of women's like, comedy group so it was like anybody from like open micers to women that have been doing it for like 10 years and I remember this woman was basically like I don't feel like I'm doing well here but I don't know what to fix and I go hey I don't know anything about you I don't know anything about what you're doing but it's worth traveling around anywhere because if you're in a think of it like this way if you're in a community let's just use the stand you're at the yeah. stand and everybody's dick joke is murdering. And then you go up like me and talk about cats and you're not doing well. Does that mean my cat jokes aren't good? Possibly. Or this isn't the right environment for <laughs> yes. my cat jokes. Yeah. And you then I need go, to find a cat cafe. I, exactly. You, find a cat you know what cafe. I mean? And I'm doing a really rudimentary idea of what this is. But if you're in Minnesota bombing and then you go to England and murder, does it mean that you don't have value? No, it just means this isn't the right audience for you. So yeah. Some communities, there's some open mic, you're starting in an open mic and everybody's doing fart jokes and you wanna fucking talk about philosophy, you're not gonna grow there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that yeah. is not me. But you're not gonna get girl. better. And yeah. I think, I feel really fortunate that like I was raised in a place that like, Yes, work hard, get better, and be better at what you're doing, and, and, and try to be, try to look yourself in the mirror and be proud. But also, I refuse to let any industry or any business tell me I can't do what I love. Even if I don't yeah. make a dime from it, I still should be able to do what I want to do. That's a, that's an inspirational advice that applies across every platform. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. if you're starting, if you're starting a soap business, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, it's true. It's like you have to set your mind to it, and then and then put in the action. You know, and I think like that's something that a lot of people miss out on. A lot of people miss out on that crucial step of like setting a goal and then like steadily working towards the goal. But I also think everything's so forward facing, even more so than when we started. But like there's this now it's like you do it and then you put it online. But before online even existed, kind of like when we started, it was just like if your peers saw it too early or if the industry saw it too early. And I think there's something about if you just want to do this and take away success, take away making money. If you just wanna do this, then fucking find where you can do it. But I think everybody's like, I'm doing it and nobody likes it, or I'm doing it and it's not going well. And it's like, well, it started out just for you. So yeah. who cares that these people don't like it? Get better, and I know that's so hard because you don't know what better is in the beginning, but eventually, you do start to find out what is good and what is value and your peers and your friends start to let you know if you're on the right path. But I refuse to let the like believe that the industry or the algorithm are the only people that know what value is. No, it's and you know what? That's what I love about you, Liz. Like you really have a belief in yourself. You I know, don't know like, where it came from. We know. <laughs> I, you, no, I do. <laughs> you're so strong. You're such a strong personality. Like I've always admired that about you. Just like even seeing you out, like you're always like the type of person that you're like, I am who I am and everyone else can go fuck themselves yeah and i admire that and they don't I, like that yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah well i'm kind of like in a different way i'm kind of always like oh fitting into a box you know people yeah. pleasing you know it's like when you see somebody else who does it so well and so strongly it's like you can't help but be like wow like and, yeah hero well <laughs> shiro it was like <laughs> shiro when ariel elias had the beer can thrown at her and i was like <laughs> i yeah. know that she was probably doing jokes that didn't hit that demographic kind of political yeah, or yeah, just sure. like cultural war stuff and I was like so impressed that she stuck with it because I would have been like, "Hello, my baby," like <laughs> yeah. trying to get yeah. them to like me as much as possible. Yeah. Like, so yeah, my yeah, boyfriend, you guys want Trump? my boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. I would have done anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just like I voted for Trump. Yeah. I love him so much. Yeah. You're, like, like, you're like, I have a tattoo. I just got it. Like, yeah. Jews will not replace us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's so true it's so true but i but i i really admire that in you i think that's one reason like uh, out of you know clearly you're an amazing business person but like having that core self-belief is like 
huge. It's huge. And you th- are thriving and you do it so well. And I, I also just, I, I think, I think we've all experienced this. Like we all have friends that like, and don't get me wrong, I've gone through phases where, like, I remember I lived with Carmen Lynch for years, and I won't say the person's name, but there was, like, a comic that had just been around as long as we had been around that was never good. He was never going to be good. He was just always bad. And yeah. you just That'll be on our Patreon. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it could be any one of hundreds of people. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, he hundreds kept, of men. but he kept with it, and you're just like, God, I wish somebody would sit him down and be like, this isn't for you. Like, yeah. this really, it, like, he was a nice yeah. guy. And I would literally, I was having such a rough time, like, 10 years in, I would sit at the kitchen table, and I'd be like, am I da-da-da? Oh, and I had like, my guy. Da- she's like, I you're had, not yeah. da-da-da. I was like, but am I? You would tell me if I'm delusional, right? Because, like, I think I'm good, but, like, nobody thinks I'm good, so I'm going to keep going down. But, like, I would want somebody to be like, honey. Yeah. Honey. Yes. Like, it's start, really hard. start doing embroidery. Start a craft show. <laughs> like, yeah. do something. The external validation, you, once you get it, then you feel like you're always seeking it, seeking it, seeking it. And you have to, I think that what is what, like the difference between having a core self-belief and not is when you have the core self-belief no matter how little external validation you're getting and i think it's so funny because i don't know if you've had people call you brave and i don't think anything that we do i is have brave. never had that i okay. know <laughs> like there's nothing <laughs> my there's soup nothing. podcast yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what soups do you love <laughs> top five soups <laughs> we're really putting ourselves out there yeah. <laughs> but i don't i don't i don't believe anything that we do as comedians is brave i just don't no i mean but it's not like brain surgery no right? and, it, and it's like it's and selfish it feels back handed when you get that <laughs> but i think it's, it's so i think brave. it's the opposite of the you know we were talking before the podcast about the trolls that kind of go after you and they're it's and they're slightly jealous because you're doing what you want but like the and people they're welcome that, yeah, yeah welcome we but we appreciate them yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the people that call you brave are the positive version of that yeah, where they wish yeah. they were doing what you were doing but they can't and they're proud of you so it's like i've had people call me brave and doing this isn't brave but i think the 10 years i did this where the only person that thought I was good at it was like me and three friends and I just kept doing it, that feels like bravery. And anything that you do in your life where you have to stay the course and you have to just kind of believe that you're going to get better yeah. and that either the world is going to change or you're going to change or or you're going to find your people. I mean, there was a couple of years where like, I mean, Carmen held me in her arms and like, oh, I, I mean, good, true, she's tall. She's yeah, got no, long no, arms. No, she was, <laughs> she's very good for that. Also, like, she can hold several of us in her <laughs> arms. Yeah, <laughs> and she needs to. <laughs> Carmen. <laughs> Ka- Kyle Ocasio's uh, daughter was really young. We, we had her in one of our like web series things, and she thought Carmen was my mom. <laughs> 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 and she would call Carmen to oh ask if gosh. I could sleep over because she loved me. It was like one of it's my how hilarious. Yeah, it's a, she's like seventeen now, so she oh hasn't called in a while. I know. In like, that wild, you're yeah. like. You see a kid that represents your comedy age. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, you're like, oh my god, that wanted to be my best friend, and now <laughs> she's just like doesn't care about me. And I was yeah. like, everyone, do you want to sleep over? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, I think, but I think that can be applied to everything. And I think the core belief is that I, I like being creative. I know that what I do is not for everybody, and that's fine. But I like doing it, and my goal is to reach as many people as possible while still maintaining who I am and still being the person that I want to be. I want to grow. Yeah, I want to get better. Huge. But yeah. at the same time, like, I I remember, like, it really was a shift 10 years in, but, like, I started to be the comic that I was proud of. Like, and I think that's where now it's unshifting, where people can be like, you suck, or this isn't good enough, or you didn't get this thing. But it's like, I like what I do. Like, I... Yeah, you have a, you have a defined brand. You have a defined niche. Yeah, and it's successful, yeah. and it's too. And you're thriving. I saw this thing on TikTok that was like, it's talking about now because we have, everybody's doing fast content. Every Everybody is drawing inspiration from stuff that's already available online. Like, we're having the age of mediocrity. <laughs> we're going into, it's like you're going into a coffee shop now, and it looks like every other coffee shop you've ever been in because they're all yeah. going for this, like, slimmed down, like, minimalist beige aesthetic yeah. and I think that like with people putting up like a lot of quick content podcasts you know where it's like just talking 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 or like talking into the phone you know it's like stuff like what you do is going to become increasingly rare because what you do takes it takes such time and such care to define the niche and define your authenticity yeah and I, I think there's going to be people that value that. And like, I get comments all the time. They're like, you don't have any new stuff. And I was like, yeah, it's, 
you have to pay for it, you dumbass. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, like yeah. it's so funny. Like, I had a guy that was just like, all you do is, like, re-put up clips and da-da-da-da. I have three free hours. Three uh, yeah. out of four of my hours are free online. I just put out a documentary. I have, like, all these, like, web series book? and stuff. I have a yeah, book. Yeah, you have a book. I have all this stuff. And I remember writing to a dude, and I was like, just so we're clear, literally hours and years of my life and my work is free online. And I know for a fact. You have never given me a dollar. Yeah. What do you want from me? Exactly. What, do, what are you expecting from me? Do you believe that I don't have rent? Dude, I have two cats on a prescription diet. I need money. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. am making poor choices. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it's like I'm not – I appreciate all my fans. With, and I have a lot of fans that are like, hey, I have health problems. I can't come out. Dude, fucking watch my YouTube stuff. All I ask is you go send it to somebody that you Share think does it. have yeah. money. Yeah, you and that's I mean? all we ask. You know what I mean? Journey. You, you don't <laughs> have to be a part of the Patreon, friends. but we all have one rich or friend. Your enemies. Yeah, we need help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, share this with your enemies. Oh my God, that would skyrocket us. But I always I always tell people, like, my stuff is out there for free. I think there's value in that, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the decisions I've made business-wise. Yeah. But you as a fan can do your part equally free send it to your niece send it to your brother yeah. send it to your girlfriend like i put it on reddit dude yeah. put it on reddit and be like this i didn't like her but now i do you're i don't care what you say like there's a part of me that that fully believes that what you're doing is you're creating a community and that we're you're deciding what team you're on so if you're going to be on i like this type of comedy and i like somebody that works this way then you have to find ways to support it i think you have to tell your fans how to do it mm -hmm. and that's why we say things like like and subscribe because people that aren't in this business don't understand the value of what that actually yeah, does spreading yeah. but i i i'm very fortunate that i started because nobody wanted me industry or audience i started to find different ways to kind of get my my stuff out there and now I just kind of keep up on it and I'm not scared when the algorithm changes because it always changes and yeah things have never been easy and there's a part of me that's like now YouTube is getting saturated and that's something I was like 15 years ahead of and so it's like what's the next thing that we're going to do and th if the whole goal is just I want to continue to make art and have people see it and pay my rent with my work then that's that shift is so much bigger other than, oh, I don't have enough followers or I lost six followers today or like this yeah. video is bombing. It's like, who cares? That video, the whole point of that video doing well was to sell tickets so that I continue to do my art. So that one didn't work, but that's not going to change who I am as a person or yeah. a comic. Yeah, it's putting in the work. It's putting in the admin, right? Yeah. Just putting in the hours of admin. Like any any small business, you have to do that type of stuff. I was talking with this young comic. Um, we were on the road this weekend, and he was like, "Ugh, you know, I don't want to do the social media. It's like, well, you don't, I don't know anybody that has a small business that doesn't do any type of marketing. Like no one will come to your coffee shop. Yeah, how are they no one know will, who you are. How will they get your soaps? <laughs> how will they hear about your wedding party favors? Thank you for following me, wedding party favors on Instagram. I have followed back. <laughs> and I have an eye out. I have an eye out for those. But yeah, it's like... But it's that's such a valid point. And I know what sucks is that every artist just wants to be an artist. And I love, like, I love any kind of art. I love, like, people that paint. I love street art. Like, I follow so many people that, like, hand make shit. I love that shit. They don't want to make it either. Nobody wants to do this. I do my mailing list. I will shout to the rooftops. Every comedian should have a mailing list. I hate doing my mailing list. Yeah, I, I do it quarterly. I hate yeah. everything about yeah. it. I do it once a year when I think of it. <laughs> but, but So join. <laughs> you will not be spammed. Link, in, link below. Link below. But it's important. And it's yeah. the reason. Like, I could get canceled tomorrow and still be a, a successful comic. Because yeah. that's how important it is. I don't know what I'm going to do to get canceled. Yeah, I'm I know. I was going to say, it. what could you get canceled I'm for? Saying, yeah. Yeah. What I'm, let's try some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are some buzzwords we can put out? <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, is everything is fickle. And so there's people that are just like, you know, anything can be bought out by a billionaire and get ruined at any moment. So it's yeah. like fucking play the game. It's all a game. Just play the game so that you can live the life that you want to live. The same way that, like you said, any business is playing some kind of game, doing some kind of marketing. Mm -hmm. It just sucks that we have to do all of it, and that's not what we want to do. But I don't want a desk job. We, so we've been outsourcing. Yeah, I think it's interesting to Lex. So <laughs> Lex, shout out. Yeah, yeah. But you should. I think that's totally fine. To me, the the price hasn't made it. You know what I mean? Like the amount of money, like the amount of time it takes to do it, isn't worth the amount of money that I would be spending. But that yeah. it's right there. Like I'm yeah. ready to. Almost well, I do other comics, and then 
what the money that they give me, I, I give put, to somebody else. I give to somebody because I can't do it on a personal level because I just don't no. want to be personally attached to it. I totally yeah. get yeah. that. Yeah. Because I, I hate myself when no, I start no. watching <laughs> hours of myself No, online. it's terrible. It's yeah. absolutely terrible. But I know it gets hard. It's like staring in the mirror and you just see like you <laughs> stare your into your one wrinkle. You're like, that's all they say. <laughs> I know I do my own videos too and I'm just like I'm like I cannot believe that I have this this is the sound of my voice <laughs> that I'm just assaulting people with it every day like hello <laughs> I it's so jarring but you know you got to do it you yeah. got to do it yeah. and people love it now uh, let's get on to some more important stuff here now Liz when you're going when you're going on an international trip as you are going you're going to Dubai what's in your suitcase I I need to know what are your what's your top anything five anything like we'd be like ooh yeah. weird but yeah. oh i get it yes it's, I, it's that's not me it's very little i will wear the okay. same pants over you, and over you pack again. light You're i a light do so one pants several tops yeah so yes. okay so okay. so okay so if it's local like if it's somewhere like i'm s i sell my books so i'll have my whole suitcase will be books and i'll just roll pants around like literally yeah. it's like barely clothes and then it's and you're talking carry on 22 by yeah, by six. yeah, yeah. love it yeah, oh, I love super this. heavy i feel yeah. like i apologize to every Books uber person a lot yeah they're very heavy and then the whole goal is to sell them so that i can just have this suitcase that i like throw in the wind like yeah <laughs> when my suitcase <laughs> is like going home like i want people to think like she dumped a dead body yeah, yeah. no then um, you can fill up on trinkets i do i go to a lot <laughs> of <laughs> I go to a lot of thrift stores and vintage yes. stores and i'm yeah. just like i got two teacups for my tea parties yes well i um, know you love like art you love like going to art shows yeah and stuff, i like, love when like when you go town to town yeah i like local art and i like i like weird shit so so great so, th so really what i'm packing is normal what i'm taking home is weird as shit okay. i love buying oh gifts God. i bought my sister i was in like salt lake city and i love like any kind of like flea market or art market and like two blocks from my hotel was this like art market that took up a whole park and i was like you, and they were like you know selling oh, like apple cider fabulous. donuts and like oh fabulous you know what I mean? like i was like i was just like that's I, my safe word the I usual cider donuts. Dude, <laughs> dude i was like i was like high skipping i don't need anybody i love touching people's handmade jewelry i'm like so i ended up buying this christmas gift for my sister that was like an old like tuba or trumpet like just like a like a some kind of wind instrument i don't even know if that's true yeah and but he made it so that you put your phone on it and it the music goes through the instrument oh my and my God. sister my wow. sister both my sister and my brother-in-law are musicians and i just thought it was so cool i'm talking to this old man for like 30 minutes i got the price down i was like everything about it i was like super but then i sold all my books and my my suitcase was like two pairs of pants and then like a tuba <laughs> like, <I was> like, <laughs> like i know the x-ray guy's like what? What is you get your luggage search they're like ma'am we're gonna need yeah, to pat you yeah. down can you Something's blow wrong. in this tuba yeah. like why do you just have like literally dirty underwear and a tuba? <laughs> it's just so suspicious but like you're Indiana Jones coming I, back with yeah. a weird I do I get treasures yeah I love, <laughs> I love a treasure and then I love I love buying gifts and like even like my you know my birthday was yesterday and my little sister like always is like is there anything you want and like me and my sister are really close I was like I don't want anything you don't have my I don't need anything I don't want anything I was like I will say I bought all your gifts while I was touring Europe a couple months ago and you're gonna you're gonna kill me how nice my gifts are. Like, yeah. you know I, mean? I was <laughs> yes. in Madrid. I yeah. was in Paris. Like, I was just getting her little thing. And I know, and it's less about the money. It's just that she can't go there and get those things. And I'm a better sister. And that's yes. all I want to do is oh make my her God, feel that's bad. Great. And we will be we'll be revealing the gifts <laughs> on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. like to me, I really love like I go to these weird like vintage stores and I get like a just something weird for somebody oh. that I give it to them for their birthday. It's six way better because people will be like, "Well, you grab me some." You know, you go overseas and you're like, well, everything you can actually just get in America. Yeah. Everything's globalized now. Yeah. So when you, it is fun going to the more of the street markets yeah. or the thrifting because you get more unusual gifts that are one of a kind. My buddy, Burka, it's still my favorite gift I ever got him. It's a, it's a nutcracker, but it's legs. So yeah. it's like a butt and legs. Oh, it's I like it. sexy <laughs> legs. And it's so Burkash and I got it for him and I got it. It's like, literally I got it in Italy at like a vintage store and I was like it wasn't even that expensive I was so excited about it and then I had to hold on to it for it for eight months until it was his birthday and then I gave it to him and it's like on his like his like wall prominently I've yeah. like never been like when you hit a gift like that like that is oh, uh, it's, a, it's, a it's an art yeah. it's an art to get oh. gift giving and it's such an activity I find like thrift shopping or like going to those things like when you are, spend so much time like creating being creative and then that's such a way to fill up your bucket you know you're exposing yourself to other art that was one of the things that she said in the um, the seven sacred types of rest that was <laughs> 
creative <laughs> rest. Creative rest. You expose yourself to other art, and it helps fill the bucket. It Ugh. does, and I, I like. So what's been really interesting lately is that fans have been reaching out to me and being like, "Hey, I saw you wearing funky earrings in your special. I would like like check out my website. I'd love to give you anything you want." Yeah. And you're just like, "Oh, that's so cool." But then there's cool. a part of me that's like, "You're a tiny business, and I'm a. T I don't want your like." So I've been doing a lot of trades. So yeah. like, I'll give people my cat book for free, and they'll give me earrings. Oh, so yeah, like, a promotion or like book for book. Like somebody be like, "Hey, I want to send you a book." I was like, "I'll send you my book." I was like, Absolutely. "Mine's truly worthless." But yeah, <laughs> yeah like yeah. it's not a fair trade <laughs> at all. Someone like really put like their heart and soul into it and I'm like I wrote about cats too much but for me I think I I love art so much and I love handmade stuff like when I make like a fan that does pottery I'm just like I made a oh pottery fan like pottery. I just pottery oh dude oh. I love ceramics so oh, I much love yes. <laughs> I love a pot that's one of my um things that I'm like I'm gonna get into ceramics yes dude. and then yeah. just have all the stuff and then never get to it yeah, yeah. I just yeah. think of that scene they, from ghost you yeah. know when he's the ghost <laughs> like that's I don't want to learn ceramics I just want to have that scene where I'm being haunted by my dead lover as I'm making a, I'm making like a, a bowl for my granola for your new lover <laughs> yeah for my new lover <laughs> I, I want to do that f I, Halloween one year. That's going to be me and Mike's costume. I think oh, I'm going to have that. him grow his hair longer. I'll get a pixie <laughs> and then we'll be the scene from Ghost. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to do this. There's wigs. Thank you. you. Just yes. Wigs. We'll, but we'll have two wigs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please just buy wigs. I can't. I can't actually see Mike with long hair. <laughs> oh, I think he I would know. do well with a little drop cut here. I think it he would, would look, look like a so mullet. Cute. Yeah. I think it would instantly be a mullet. His hair is so mullet. thick, though. Yeah. His hair is thick, so it would just like stick out like Frankenstein. <laughs> I, I was gonna say he's gonna look more like a Simpsons character. Yeah. 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 Um. But yeah. So wigs. <laughs> <laughs> where, where were we? <laughs> No, I love I love um your that you you love cats. You're like a big cat person, right? And you've kind of crafted that into your niche. You've kind of made it part of your brand. You do the cat day, which I yeah. love this week. Well, Hello, hi. sexy. <laughs> oh my god. How much were you how much were you um lifting in that photo? So I'm not lifting anything. That one of the most squats. It's Oh, you were squatting. So, yeah, so okay. in in um in CrossFit during holidays, they do these like I think it has to do with like the military and stuff, but um, you have these extreme workouts. So this one's called Murph, and basically you run a mile, then you do a hundred pull-ups, two hundred push-ups, oh my, three hundred squats, and then you run another mile. Uh, and if whoa. you're super fit, you do it all in a row. But I had to break it up, so I would do I would do five pull-ups, ten push-ups, okay, pull-ups are hard. Squats. Yeah, and so I have bands, so like I'm probably only pulling about seventy five percent pounds. of your body weight. Yeah, oh, like okay. seventy five oh, pounds okay. of my own weight. The push-ups I was actually able to do. Almost all the push-ups, regular push-ups, the last 50 I had to do on a box because my arms were just spent. And then you're just squatting just your body weight. So I know when that – because my shirt is off, I was probably halfway through and I was not okay. And the owner of the gym in the middle of it gave me a hug. And I was like, oh, my God, Sam, I'm so sweaty. And and I was like, why is he hugging me? And then I saw the picture. I was like, oh, I didn't I didn't look okay. I was like, I looked so sad. Yeah, that photo pale. you posted. Well, your face looked so intense, you know. Oh, and it was I'm, just like, wow, you are it's going a, for it. It's a sixty minute workout. I it you the cap is sixty minutes. I did it in fifty eight minutes. Wow. So like oh, it's fifty eight it. minutes of constant movement and just being like. I could have been sleeping. This yeah. Is, this yeah. is a holiday. But you but, feel um, so good afterwards because yeah. you tell people about it. Yeah, yes, you talk well, about I, it all I, day. I sent, I sent, so my, <laughs> my, oh, my legs are so sore. Oh, guys, I can't, don't I can't get this me. stuff on the bottom. I don't, sh I can't squat anymore because yeah. I've squatted oh. 300 times. Yeah. Um, no, I sent, I ended up sending the picture to my mom. My mom's a competitive power lifter. Wow. So it's like, we're all just too intense. And so I sent it to my mom. I was just like, I was just like, look at this. And my mom, so keep in mind, like the most I've ever deadlifted, I think is maybe one. 25 okay my mom can lift 325 wow Holy shit. Can she like, lift your dad yeah absolutely my, a, i'm yeah. impressed yeah no she's she's a beast that's um, amazing so my, that's my goal is to lift joe <laughs> <laughs> and just be like take care of this baby um no but i i i, I for me i mean fitness is 100 percent how i haven't lost my mind and my mom did every workout trend like she really discovered like crossfit and then from crossfit she got into powerlifting. But like I always, my mom did every workout fad from like tie bow to like jazzer. Oh, I did tie bow. Like yeah. I did a little tie bow. Everything that was from 90s like or early 2000s. That was 90s. That was, yeah. Yeah. That was 90s. So did yeah. Did she do abs of steel? Probably. Yeah. My, every that was single a big VHS one. tape. And yes. like, so my mom did all of that stuff. And finally she like, she told me she did it so she didn't murder us because she had five kids. But now I think I can see how like, because I got into marathon running and I've always yeah. been like, I yeah. did gymnastics when I was younger. I think. This business is clearly there's some kind of adrenaline junkiness to it, like just do, being on stage. The like 
you have to be in the present moment to perform and then there's all these endorphins and well it's stamina you. too psychologically because yeah. i feel like that's why i always thought tennis was very similar to stand-up because it's like it's not only who's the funniest or strongest it's who's who's the one that can stay in the moment the longest yeah and it's it because i know once i hit 20 minutes i'm always like i'm done yeah, 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 yeah. i am yeah. done and i can Especially feel if it's not going well yeah i can yeah. see i can see me drop like drop a level yeah you know what i mean because like i'm like kind of very like like a lot of energy and i'm yelling but like i've seen like just going like to just going to a reserve <laughs> yes. level or yeah. you're just doing a play you're like yes. dissociating to like create a barrier between you and the guy that's like eating wings yeah yes. hasn't laughed one yeah. time he's like mad at his wife for getting them tickets yeah. like so i think in some ways um both exercise helps me like shut down my crazy yeah exhaust the psychosis but yes. also <laughs> to run it down yeah just like just get just not be myself for an hour but also i think i need some kind of endorphins like i need something yeah. needs to be kind of yes. fed in there yeah because like right now like i'm I, you know i start touring in a couple of days but i haven't toured for like three weeks and i needed that rest but i slept for a week and then I like woke up refreshed and I was like, I'm sad now. <laughs> like I was uh, like, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, no, I haven't done like an hour yeah. or like been scared about like missing a flight. Like all the things that are both like good and bad about like travel and working. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, no, I'm I'm in reserves. And yeah, I'm you have to sad. get yourself going. You got yeah. So you you love CrossFit. Yeah, I, I didn't at first. It was just I needed I was starting to fall out of love of running. And I had done that for like almost 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I was like doing marathons and. And I still run and I, I still enjoy it, but I clear I like to be exhausted. Like m all my friends were in yoga and I tried it and I was just like, no one's punched me in the face yet. <laughs> like, like, I yeah, yeah. yeah. I need to feel like I kind of need my brain. Slight to abuse. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. I, I yeah. When you get to the point where you almost throw up and then you don't, that's yeah. when you feel the best afterwards. Paradoxically, I find. Yoga, I can still hate myself. <laughs> yeah i know yoga yoga just, you don't need to focus that much to do it you're like your mind is just still spinning off which is like the whole point yeah and i think like crossfit is like so hard that literally for an hour i'm nowhere else and i think yeah that's great i think that's what i just for me what i need yeah because i i know when i'm still doing yoga i'm still having like um resentments to stand <laughs> up in the middle of it yeah. yeah where when i'm running my mind is more like i gotta get through this yeah, yeah. So like, oh, in the fuck. moment yeah, yeah it's either, or or it's like i get really creative like one of the things i've always loved yeah. about running is the same way that like you think of ideas in the shower or you think of ideas while yes, you're driving yes sometimes my mind just like wanders and i'll fix a joke or i'll like be like i yes. should apologize to my friend like, like, all of a sudden, <laughs> like i just there's clarity that comes with running and i i know for a fact i have trouble relaxing and i'm working on it yes um but the intermediate between meditation and and my crazy is just like physically exhausting myself yeah. like a dog yeah it yeah. works it, it works. does well that's why i quit doing the gym because you're just like i'm still looking at my phone yeah a, a lot while i'm in here in between reps that you're like yeah. this is i feel like it's counterintuitive yeah it's yeah like, and what's I, the point I, yeah i do want to be off the grid like i do yeah. yeah it helps you it helps reset the brain i think to just fully shut down yeah now what's your journey that you're on now are you into anything like kooky or wacky oh thank you for asking of the yeah. feminine spirit yeah uh, anything I, any any overnight oats forays um so I feel like we all have a similar schedule. Like I make zero dollars in December, like really from like Thanksgiving to like the second week of January, yeah. everything shuts down mm -hmm. and I don't do corporate gigs. So that's like, there's no money in that time. So I'm not really working that much and I will sink into like a depression. So I didn't want to do that. So I've always been a reader, but like because I've been tired, I wasn't reading as much. So I was trying to get it like I had like you have to read a book a month. I used to read mm. like 25 books a year. And I I'm haven't read a book in 10 years. Yeah, yeah. I only read self-help now. <laughs> 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 really, really easy. <laughs> Where they're just like, bullet points yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're like, nailed it. Yeah. Um, but I, I really do enjoy reading, but I was like too tired to do it. So I was like, you're going to get back into reading. Just find some books that you like. And then I got really into embroidery. I wanted to do Ooh, something. I get that. I <gasps> yeah. wanted to do I something creative it. that yes. I could like take with me. And then also like I actually have trouble locking into shows. Like if it's a really good show or it's a very visual show, I can. But like 
you know, my sister will recommend, like, I just want something to be like half there, but it's like half there and you're on your phone. I don't want to do that. I want to get off my phone. Yeah. Yeah. So now I half watch stuff and I do embroidery. It got me through my Christmas family break. Yeah. Because, oh, so great. Because if you're on your phone in front of your family, you're an asshole. I but agree. If you're doing yeah. embroidery at the kitchen table while talking to everybody, well, you're just a creative spirit. Yes. yes. Just, oh my god. And you're I'm just like, Aunt I'm making Liz. this for my niece. <laughs> I am. Yeah. I was Aunt Liz, oh, and I got I love it. so much credit because I'm I'm one of those like if I get exhausted by my family, I pull away and you won't see me for hours, or I'll go for a run, yeah. and it has nothing to do with exercise, everything to do with like I don't want to murder. Just my a family. break. Yeah. 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 But I was able to like embroider my way through family time. Oh my in a gosh. way that like I real and I was and I got my mom into it. I got my sister did now my sister is like crocheting and I'm yeah. like I'm I gotta oh be a grandmother. Gosh. I'm like it's so like excited. Medieval parlor over there. <laughs> yeah. Just ladies doing work, needlework. It was. We were all sitting at the ki- kitchen table and like gossiping. Aw. Yeah, it was well, great. It does drive me insane. I wanted I'm about to go on a family vacation and the last Christmas they all were here and I have tons of photos of several members just on their phone the yeah. whole entire time that yeah. I was like, What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I, I I'd like to have a conversation, and it's fun, and I feel like you get material that way. Yeah, yeah. you're ruining my career, yeah. Aunt Sarah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's like we all know you're just like on Reddit. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're no. just looking at memes. And I'm like this. We'll just like engage, or yeah. either that, just take this a nap in the, the next room or something, yeah. or watch a conversation. A TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a meme, but in real life. <laughs> But it is. I, I mean, I, I see my whole family. on, And then also, like, I have a bunch of nieces and nephews, and I don't I don't want to be like this. Like, I'd rather them see yeah. me be a dork with embroidery. But, like, <laughs> I mean, the one thing I'm grateful with CrossFit is they I love, like, throwing them around. Like, yeah. I very much, like, I you know, Scout will do handstands, and I'm holding her legs, and then I'll pick her up. And then, of course, my older sister's God. like, don't drop them. I was like, it's not mine. You could probably <laughs> do a family <laughs> pyramid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. My favorite, though, I made up this game called tra- – it's called Trash Game. And what I do is I pick up, like, my nephew, and I go to everybody in the family. I go, does anybody know where the trash can is? <laughs> does anybody know? And I ask yeah, everybody I where it. the trash is, and then I go to the trash, and I try to put them in the trash. And then they're like, no! And they, like, freak out. And I did that so much over the course of a week during Christmas that my entire neck and shoulders, I couldn't move You're my neck. I oh, fucked. I do mean, it. It was yeah. so bad that, like, I truly was, like, it went on for a week, and I was like, oh, my God. And my dad was like, you work out? And I was like, yeah, but the weights don't wiggle. They don't yeah. wiggle, Dad. Like, yeah. I really fucked myself up and like yeah. my brother-in-law is a firefighter i was like why am i doing this he's a giant man like yeah, why yeah. am i playing trash game like <laughs> but it's so fun so it's like for me like i like i like putting together like my uncle used to do this when we were younger like you put together all their toys after i like they that get them, i do that play or legos them. and stuff and I, oh, yeah. I try to buy him a game and i've been like successful three years in a row where i'll buy a game and the whole family got uh, obsessed with the game so there was this game that i bought truly off like a Chinese website like it was just like one of those things that came into Instagram and I was like that looks like a sure. fun game it was like in a box with a no label <laughs> like, oh my god like, it's kind of like <laughs> Jumanji Hellraiser <laughs> <laughs> yeah. truly it was like it was like not a typical like you find it in like Target or whatever but it was this gymnastics game and my, my older sister did gymnastics I did gymnastics my niece does it it basically it you spin it around and then you have to get it to land right so yeah. it's like you press this button It's but we couldn't get it to work so it would just kind of fall off and I was like oh I think it's a dud and then my brother just kept working on it and he finally got it to like just land. It, would, it wouldn't stick at the landing and so I was like okay I think we're figuring this out so then the entire family ta- and then finally we got it and then like every single person was taking turns and then like we were you get points depending on where they land and yeah. how well they land everyone was upset I saw my dad who doesn't participate in any of this like everybody was like outside and my dad's like <laughs> you know? and it was like the most success so that's like the biggest thing is like something we can all play together and yeah oh, working about fun. bonding and yeah, great. Just, yeah it's, yeah it feels I love it family better time. yeah it's it like a wholesome meal yeah you need something to distract because it's like if there's not an activity that's when the triggering happens <laughs> truly <laughs> <laughs> you need to we did it we did a good game at my family i found it at tj maxx it was boomers versus millennials <laughs> and it's just cards and we yeah. had like other people in different generations that we had to like I mean, we had a little overlap but it's like yeah. i think f- games and activities are so key for family time it keeps it, it light keep it light no one's about to say anything that's a res- a, res- a resentment in yeah, the middle of a yeah. conversation where you're like well what did you mean by that you're not yeah. going to get that in yeah. a game yeah it's something it's, it's like something easy it's a way to eat snacks and like not hate each other like yeah i just I feel like it. yeah family games family games guys. what are your favorite family games <laughs> comment below or tell <laughs> us that women are stupid <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want. <laughs> but seriously, we are out of time. Liz, I want to no. say thank you. You're so fantastic. Yeah. You're, you're an amazing, you're a mensch. 
Uh, in a woman way. Yeah. A wench. A wench. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a wench. Um, You're a wench. Where can they find you? Yeah. Tour uh, dates and all that. Yeah, everything's at Liz Mealy, so M I E L E. Join our mailing list. Join my mailing list. Check out some of her amazing specials. Uh, I got three free specials, and then I'm taping another one in September in Brooklyn. Amazing. Boom. And please follow us, like, and subscribe. Leave us a review on iTunes. A nice one. Lady yes. Journey. Lady <laughs> Journey. <laughs>